Hey everyone, we are back, ready to go dive again. Um, gathering up some dive buddies, grabbing up our gear. We're gonna head down to Pals Verdes, hopefully grab some fish. Let's see how the day goes. See you in the water. Just got to Palos Verdes for another dive. It is looking super, super flat right now. Barely any wind. So really excited to see what's out there. Um, always good to have good conditions, even if you don't catch fish. But hopefully land something good, maybe take home and, and eat, but ready to go out. Let's dive in. So if you're wondering where all your trash goes after you dump it close to the ocean, this is where it goes. Please clean up after yourselves. Put all the styrofoam. It's not even, it's, there, it's all across this beach, but we're gonna clean some of this up. A lot of styrofoam. Bottle caps. Slipper. is a paint can. See, I'm still using my buddy's gun, a 90 Open Pro Pathos. It's the one I use to catch the white sea bass. Still working on my Pathos Sniper Roller, and uh, it should be up and running pretty soon. I'm about to learn a lesson that I will never forget. Make sure to check your leader line on your spear guns. Because take the shot, takes a little bit of line, nice little opal eye, start pulling, and it just goes loose. So you can see here the mono tore off of the shaft. I think the majority of the damage came when I shot the white sea bass with this gun and it was a lot of pressure on this mono, but I think it was just old as well. So make sure you check your mono um, and get it changed from time to time. So just to keep it out of the way, I tied it up and started to look for my shaft. So my dive buddy found the shaft, super happy. It was a little murky down there, so I was starting to lose hope. Um, so I unraveled the mono and started organizing things so I could hopefully re-rig this thing in the water. So after I unravel the mono off the gun, I go ahead and grab the line, cut the Dyneema off of the leader of mono, and the idea here, my initial thought was, I'll tie the Dyneema directly onto the shaft and I'll be ready to go. So 
So at this point, I'm taking off the gloves and hopefully that gives me a little bit better control when I'm trying to put the Dyneema into the shaft, the hole of the shaft. And every step of the way, both my dive buddies are helping me out tremendously, finding the shaft and holding my stuff while I'm trying to figure this out. So huge shout out to them, um, just super, super helpful. you all of the repeats but essentially I try to fit this Dyneema into the shaft hole and it is not going through only the center uh, weave is going through and it just ends up not working and I try this multiple times probably solid 15 minutes pass and I just keep trying this So after trying for a bit, a dive buddy has the idea of using the point of the stringer to hopefully push the line through the hole. You try this out. That's not working either, so I look around, I see some uni my buddy caught, and I actually try to use some of the spikes to try to push it through since it's a little thinner than the stringer. But I quickly find out that the sea urchin spikes are a little too brittle and can't be used. So after all of those attempts, my dive buddy goes back, grabs a mono, and we decide to use that. And after all of that fussing around, we finally get some line through. <laughs> so once it came time to tying the knot, I only knew the fisherman's knot at the time. I forgot the constrictor knot. And this is a great lesson that I learned from other veteran spear fishermen that are way more seasoned than me, that when you're out in the water, you're out trying to just make a quick fix, just do what you know. And I know a fisherman's knot, though it's not pretty and not ideal, it'll get me to where I need to be at that moment at least. So if you're in a position where you think it must be better to use it than the knot, if you have a knot that works, use it. So one side is connected to the shaft, now I need to connect the mono to the Dyneema. So what I do is cut the opposite side of what I was working on, so I have a clean space and line to connect the two. So to connect the Dyneema to the mono, I use the same knot just twice. So I use the mono, do the fisherman's knot, feed the Dyneema through, do the fisherman's knot, and I believe that should be good enough. So I just get it just so it's workable in the water. Now finally, let's go catch some fish. So now it's time to test my underwater repair for the spear gun. Hopefully the line stays. See a little school of opali here. See a nice sized one. Wait for it to go broadside. Take the shot. Really nice shot. Go in and try to secure the fish. So my 
buddy caught one as well and this is what i usually do as well so we bleed out the fish brain it first bleed it out and then we take out the guts in the water So here I see a rock scallop and it's really tough to see but there's a little orange lip there. That's what a rock scallop identifier is. So we're going to go there. Usually I would have a dive knife that I would try but last time I tried that I snapped it off. Um, I don't have a tool so I use my hand, use some leverage and I get it off. I typically would recommend using a tool but I was targeting rock scallops that look like maybe I can get enough leverage on them. So I've been trying to get this scallop for a while so I decided to try to use my dive knife and I tried to pry it off and man I'm very frightened of damaging my new knife so I just try to use my hands it's in there pretty good these guys are really really tough to get and just so everyone knows the limit of scallop per day rock scallop is 10 per day While I was going for some rock scallops, I did notice an octopus way in the back. It's pretty tough to get to, but I try to go slow and grab its head. It shoots pretty far back into the hole, not able to get it. All right guys, just wrapped up the dive. Some good size opali. Dive buddy caught, we got a really nice Red sea urchin right here, nice size. Let me pick this up. Check that out. It's a beauty, it's a monster. It's the beak. Got some rock scallops. This guy just opened up, so we might need to eat them now. Rock scallops and some keyhole limpids. Nice little haul of the day. Here we have our rock scallop that we gathered. A nice size right there. These guys are really tough to see in the water. Check that out. So you'll usually be able to see them by seeing their orange lips right there. And they'll be popping out of these rocks. They're really um, interesting. But yeah, so these are rock scallops. Let's open them up. Just open them up. Look at those. I think next time I'm going to try to get a knife under one of the sides because it looks like I split open all the meat. Still good meat. Pull it out of these rock scallops. Check that out. We got all the meat out from the rock scallops. Time to store these and prep some food. So what we're going to do with the scallops we caught right over here that we harvested, what we're going to do is make okonomiyaki. Essentially what that is, is a uh, takoyaki pancake. And we have the batter here. We have some bonito flakes that will be going on top of the actual pancake and then topped off with some okonomiyaki sauce and some Japanese mayo. Into In the batter, there'll be onions, cabbage, some shrimp, and of course the scallop, rock scallops we cut.
smells delicious. This is our okonomiyaki. Let's sauce it up. This sauce you can find at any Japanese supermarket. I love this sauce. It's super versatile. Uh, it's great to have in your kitchen. I love it over Spam and rice. And you really can't go wrong with this sauce. A slight sweet taste, but really good. Next up, we have our Japanese mayo. You can find Japanese mayo at any Japanese store. Um, I think it's a little sweeter than the mayo we're used to stateside. Um, you gotta try it for yourself. I think it's pretty subtle and hard to distinguish, but you gotta try it out. It's the little baby on the bottle. Now we're adding some seaweed included in the packets. Next are bonito flakes. These are bonito flakes and you might have guessed, yes, you can find this at your Japanese supermarket. This is crucial to this dish. It's not as fishy as it sounds and it, they move around when you put them on, which is kind of cool, but they're really, really good with this dish. Highly recommended. We just wrapped up our okonomiyaki. This is just the sauce, but that's how it's spelled. It looks wonderful. We went a little supersized. I think I would recommend going a little bit more, um, a little smaller. Um, we had to, we had some issues with flipping and whatnot, but it still came out great. It smells delicious. And those of you that have ever have tried bonito flakes, um, they're usually on top of takoyaki and they move with the heat. So it's really interesting, but let's dive in and see how this tastes, but check that out. Ooh. Looks delicious. Let's dive in. I got my chopsticks here. Let's get an end piece. I love the crisp at the ends. Check that out. That's really good. Here's a piece of scallop. Ooh, that's so good. Mmm. Wow. That's amazing. I'm gonna keep enjoying this. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Try this recipe out. It's really simple. Um, any gra Japanese grocery store, I think some, any other Asian grocery store should have it. The directions are all included in the packaging. Super easy, delicious, and I'll see you on the next one.